right, I'd like to go ahead and open the Tuesday, December 17, 2019, Warrenton Board of Aldermen meeting. If you would rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. So before we start, I'd like to go ahead and say that we are removing an item, the section 9B, that'll be the uh, emergency option, i got to read it, the approval for the city emergencies, emergency options operations plan, uh, it'll be later on in a different meeting. Next meeting. Next meeting. Thank you. But to start it off, the consent agenda. We have the regular meeting minutes from December 3rd, 2019. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, seconded by Alderman Dyer. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller is absent. Motion passes 5 0 with one absent. Next, we'll be hearing from the public. We invite you to come to the podium. We'll give you five minutes to speak if you have need to state who you are. Here's your chance, Adam. This will be. <laughs> we'll write an article about you. <laughs> Not see anybody? We'll move on. Next will be the Board of Alderman comments. Good job, city workers on the streets. <coughs> Pass that along to Guy and his group, and Brad and his group. Yeah, I think you guys did a great job. I know I had some kids come and <clears throat> I paid them $20 to um, shovel my driveway, and 15 minutes later, you couldn't tell they'd been there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So I can only imagine how hard it is for these guys in these big trucks to handle all of this. And kudos to the WDA on downtown Christmas. It was nice. Yes, it was. I would, <clears throat> if I can get my voice, I would like to uh, congratulate the city of Warrington on a great, really, in spite of the weather, a good turnout for the wreaths across America. I know Brad was there, and uh, they had a great ceremony at the uh, uh, Veterans Memorial while it was coming down. Snow was coming down pretty good, <laughs> and I know uh, Scott's dad and mom were very uh, instrumental in it, but uh, they said the Warrington Cemetery really looks great with all the, I think there's over 400 graves uh, decorated with wreaths for Christmas and uh, Holy Rosary was uh, over 80 so I think there was right at, right at 500 wreaths put out this year and uh, so again uh, thanks to Warrington and the surrounding areas too that contributed to that I think it's very important uh, we recognize uh, the veterans on that day I know we do a good job on Memorial Day and Veterans Day and all that but uh, Christmas is a good time too. So, you know, the springboard off that Andrea Rowmaker, who doesn't ever want her name mentioned or ever want to take claim. She's a very <laughs> humble, humble individual. Um, and I know you'd probably get in trouble since you <laughs> friends with her for mentioning her. Um, she never asked for any praise or anything else, but she sat at booths. She's tried to make people aware and bring awareness to it. Um, She's just tireless on it, and I, I love the fact that she's she's kind of a pit bull to get out there and get it done. Else? All right. So I'd like to once again also say WDA Downtown Christmas was an excellent, excellent time. Um, it was nice to see some of our restaurants had people waiting outside them in lines. Um, one maybe due to it's kind of a smaller restaurant, but it still had people waiting outside yes. lines. Um, and the response from a lot of the business owners was excellent. Um, 
just to see them support and uh, actually ask the WDA what they could do to be more involved next year. So I felt like it was a good time. I felt like it was uh, sub very well supported. And uh, I can't wait for next year. So with that, uh, boards and commission appointments. So the Board of Adjustments, uh, five-year term appointments of Stacey Blondin and Michael Cooper as alternate A, Philip Priest as alternate B, and Eric Holt as alt alternate C. Uh, the building board, a two-year term, reappointment of Rick Brigham Johan, Gary Scott, and Fred Flake. Planning and zoning, four-year term, reappointment of Scott Costello and John Doit. I, I always say it wrong. Each. Thank you. And uh, the TIF Commission, a four year term reappointment at Clifton Wolf and Damian Frederick. So, uh, entertain a motion for the mayor's appointments to the Board of Adjustment, Building Board, and Plan Planning and Zoning and TIF Commission as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Shell Harvey. Second by Alderman Dyer. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Motion passes 5-0 with one absent. <coughs> so next would be the presentation of the audit results from Alan Schultz, Bot Botson Deal and Company, PC. Good evening. Um, my name is Alan Schulte. And uh, our firm has worked on the audit for the city for a number of years. I was in charge of it again this year. Uh, the city received an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements, which means it's in accordance with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. Um, we didn't make any material audit adjustments as part of the audit this year. Um, if you want to look at page five, I'll just draw your attention to a few things. Um, the first section here is the management discussion and analysis. And it's kind of a good place to get some explanations for why numbers are the way they are, what changed compared to last year. Um, so on page five, um, at the bottom there of that table is government-wide, um, your balance sheet, so your assets, liabilities, things like that. Um, kind of the big differences between last year and this year, uh, capital assets increased. Um, that was the last little bit of the aquatic center um, going into fixed assets there. Um, Long-term liabilities decreased. Uh, that's paying down principal on the debt related to the aquatic center and the interchange. Um, and you'll notice unrestricted net assets is a negative number. Um, now, that is because you all borrowed to build the interchange but the interchange isn't the city's asset. So it ended up being an expense and not an asset for the city. So as you pay down that debt, that number will flip back to a positive number. Um, but just because of the way governmental financial statements are designed, it, it looks like you have a negative number there, but you have tax revenue to pay that debt. So it's not like you really have a negative would you typically see a negative number in most cities that did capital projects the way we do it? Um, you know, the one thing that does push a lot of places into negative is if they do a TIF, because again, you're paying for assets that aren't yours, that don't end up on the asset side of the ledger. So, um, you know, it's a little unusual to have, you know, to have something like that where you don't end up owning the asset. But, I mean, you, you had a purpose for it. You have the revenue sources for it to pay it down. So, although it looks like a big negative number, it, it's really not. I was it, asking the question earlier, because if you go back to 16, that negative number was a positive number. So there's a big swing. Right. So the question then is relates to the, really the TIF pro or the, the, the TIF or, or the interchange project. So if a person were to break out that number even further of unrestricted between 
what's creating that versus what's normal operations, you would expect to see a positive number in the normal operations side. Is that fair to say? Correct, correct. And I, I believe, I can tell you real fast here, I believe the outstanding balance on the loan was a million, or not a million, just under 13 million. So in theory, if you backed out against the eight, it's at 8.6, you're right. back at about a 5, which is where we were in 2016 prior to the project. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. That is exactly the way you would want to look at it. You don't have to it. answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so then, any other questions about that one? On the next page, the top there, that's water and sewer. So business type activities is your water and sewer fund. Um, there really wasn't any big variances between the prior year there. Um, you know, long-term debt is decreasing because you've made principal payments. Um, there weren't any big uh, capital asset um, changes in, in, to, in 2019. Um, if you go to page 7, that'll show revenues and expenses, um, governmental, government, governmental, not water and sewer, included in that. Um, charges for service were up, but that's because you put the aquatic center in service, so you know you generated more fees, um, user <coughs> fees there. Um, also in there is, is fines. Um, from the police department, you were all fully staffed, so you know that generated a little more fine revenue um, in 2019. Um, taxes were pretty much flat. In, in that number is property and sales um, and all the different restricted uh, type taxes. Uh, but again, the variance, you know, the, the net increase versus <laughs> decrease, again, from going negative eight to positive is related to the, to the project. Exactly, okay. exactly. So as you can see in the street department, there in expenses, last year there was 10.8 million expenses. That most of that was the interchange. Um, oh, and culture and rec was up a little bit compared to last year, or up quite a bit, I guess. Again, that's the cost of running the aquatic center and, and things like that. Um, interest was down just because you're paying down debt um, every year. Let's see. Age eight. Um, so that's water and sewer on page eight. Uh, you had about a 10% increase in revenue. Uh, and you only had about a 4% increase in rates. So most of the increase was just usage. There was a pretty big jump in what the, the industrial sewer was. Um, so that was a lot of the driver in the increase in revenue. Um, I had asked this question, I don't know if you know the answer to it. The, the transfer amount kind of looks different. You had a negative transfer of 4.9. Right. Thousand, and now you've got a positive. So you got a swing of 700,000, which attributes to the bottom line. Right. So, so it was an unusual year. Okay. Because you, when you did the interchange, you also did some sewer improvements. So, and those were paid by a fund that's not water and sewer. So in order to get those assets over to water and sewer, it was a transfer. So next year, it'll go back to a negative number again. OK. Um, you paid down about $685,000 in outstanding <laughs> debt during the year. Um, if you want to jump ahead to page 22, jump around a little bit here. Um, cash flow statement for the water and sewer. So that first section kind of shows what um, the normal operations of water and sewer brings in. So you're bringing in about a two and a half million dollars in fees, less expenses. Um, but out of that two and a half million, you still have to pay debt, debt payments. That was about a million dollars. And then any kind of, you know, capital acquisitions during the year just regular stuff was about another 800,000. So at the end of the year, your net cash position increased about 425,000. Okay, now I'm gonna jump back. Well, you don't even have to really see it. Um, 
Well, I'll jump back this way a little bit. So if you go back to page 18, um, that's the fund financial statement. So this is what you're a little more used to seeing on a monthly basis when you look at your financials, general fund, capital improvements fund, um, things like that. So if you look at the fund balance in the general fund ended with $3.3 million, that covers about 200 days worth expenses. So right at about six months is where you finished the year. Um, capital improvements had about $600,000 fund balance. That one you're going to see fluctuate a lot because you're generally going to build up a little money, do a big project. Um, so that number will kind of bounce around a little bit. But that's kind of what's available at the end of the year to, to buy capital assets. Um, interchange fund. Um, so there's kind of a couple things going on in there. When you issued the bonds, that money went into that fund to keep track of it as you spent it down. And now as you're paying back the bonds, the tax money restricted for those payments is going into that fund. So you collected about a million five in sales tax that will be used to pay down the bonds for the interchange. Okay? And kind of the last thing I'll talk about in the financial statements is on page, I didn't write it down, towards the back would be the pension. I know you guys probably don't see this very often. So on page 48, um, there's a there's a table, and this table will eventually be 10 years of information, um, but since you guys are newer to the pension, it'll kind of keep building each year. Um, so the top half shows what loggers estimated liability to provide pension benefits is. So right now you're just under $2.1 million. So that's all the benefits that people have earned to date that would be paid out. The second section is the amount of assets that loggers hold to pay those benefits. So at the end of June, you're at about $229,000. The difference is your net pension liability, or about one million two hundred sixty-nine thousand. So, since you guys are kind of trying to catch up a little bit, since you joined and and allowed past employees to get service credit, so it's going to take you guys a little time to catch up to that. Um, but you can see on the next line where it says thirty-five percent, that's the percentage then of the liability that's funded. So you can see, you know, three years ago it was 13%, then it was 26%, now it's 35%. So <coughs> at two. Over a cycle, what yeah, be ideally a you want to see it at least 80%. 80% would be good enough. Um, I will say from what we see, loggers is really good. Most plans are really close to 100 right now. Really? Uh -huh. Now, you know, the market's been really good. So, you know, they've seen a lot of good returns and stuff. Um, but yeah, so the fact that they're at 100 now, when we do see that downturn, it should still stay about 80. So, I mean, I would feel pretty confident in how loggers handles it and that they're pretty conservative as far as, you know, getting adequate contributions in. Their investment returns are pretty solid and consistent. So, you know, I would, I would think we would continue to see that jump 10% a year until we get to that year when there's a bad market, you know, and then you'll probably see it stay flat, maybe go down a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, loggers is pretty solid. So in theory, if you got 10%, in five years, you should be around 80. Right, right. And I'm sure, I don't know what the plan was when you joined. I'm sure they had kind of a certain number of years where they thought they would get to that. Did they say? I had that number. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, I would guess it'd be about 10 years that would be their goal to get you, be, get all those to past. To be fully funded? Yeah, to get those past get service credits funded. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and off the top of my head, do you know what your contribution rate is? Is it nine? Well, the note in the book, or in the notes, I can't remember where it was, talked about 6.9. Okay, 6.9. Okay. For, for general, and then police was 6.7. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so so that 6.9, 6.7 is designed a little bit to get those past credits, and then the rest is, you know, for, cert, for current 
credits that people are earning. Oh, if a person got up to 80%, then would you assume that the 6.9 would drop down? Because you did, you did the catch-up. Yeah. Your current, or do you not typically see that? It generally doesn't drop too often. Okay. Um, you know, the one thing that they do have, there is a state statute that restricts how much they can bump it. So in, you know, 8, 9, 10, when things were really bad, they could only do 1% increases. So I think they're, you know, since they were limited there, they try to be a little more cautious on the other side before they start reducing. But I mean, I would think if it got, you know, if you got to 100 and it stayed at 100 pretty consistently, you would probably see very small decreases. <sighs> Okay. Um, Let me go stay on this topic. I thought in one of the previous statements up above, the liability for loggers jumped from two hundred thousand to a million plus. It was a significant jump. I have to find it. Oh, um, you know, some of it can be timing too. Okay. Um, you know, I, I was just at another city uh, last week in there plan year end is December. And if you remember last December was awful. So their net pension liability jumped three million bucks in one year. You know, they had a thirty million dollar total liability. So, you know, we're talking much bigger numbers, but you know, they got hit with a three million dollar increase. But if you'd looked at the same plan at June thirty, it would have probably been zero. So, you know, six months can make a huge difference when you're looking at these two numbers, which is why when this is 10 years, it'll be really good information. You'll be able to see, okay, consistently where are we at? Take out, okay, the outlier really great year and the outlier really bad year and, and really see, okay, on an average, where do we end up? You know, there's so many estimates in these numbers and then, like I said, with the market fluctuations can have big jumps from year to year. Right? I don't know where that, saw that. Because there, there was a big jump in liability, but then there was an explanation note that talked about, basically it sounded to me like I said, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh -huh. That's kind of, I did say that, but that was the impression I got. Now, now, sometimes there can be changes if they change assumptions. You know, they change uh, life expectancy tables, right. you, you might see. And then you would see that difference up in that top section where it says changes in assumptions and uh, in experience expected versus actual. You know, if there's anything really big, you'll see it. Well, you'll see all of them in there. But, you know, sometimes if they change, like I said, life expectancy tables, that can be big or... Um, you know, if you ever tweak your benefits a little, or if they change what the expected rate of return is. So I think they use seven and a half right now, um, but lots of places have been kind of slowly ticking those down, and you know, a quarter percent or a half percent change in your expected rate of return, you know, um, could be a couple hundred thousand dollars for you guys um, based on your numbers. So, but I mean, seven and a half, I think, is where a lot of place people are settling now. Um, years and years ago, lots of people used eight, eight and a half, nine, and I think, you know, history has shown, recent history anyway, that maybe that's a little too aggressive. So, um, you know, like I said, based on the other ones I see, seven and a half is pretty, pretty reasonable uh, estimate there. All right. Anything else? Okay. Um, management report, I was just going to mention it real quick. All that says is, you know, the statements are management's responsibility. So what that means is you guys are giving us information that we're, you know, putting in a financial statement format, but it's your information. Um, we're issuing an opinion on that information. Um, statements include estimates. So all this pension stuff, lots of big estimates in there, depreciation, things like that. Um, we don't really have any recommendations this year. Um, audit went really smooth, you know, as it always does here. Um, any questions about the management report? And then on the graphs, um, 
the first one is general fund revenues. Um, you can see a few increases in uh, fines. Again, fully staffed police department was probably the driver there. Um, charges in service, charges for service. That was just the aquatic center <laughs> being open um, and another revenue stream. Uh, the next one is general fund expenditures, <coughs> kind of the same driver, you know, police expenses were up because you had more police officers and culture and rec was up because the aquatic center was open and you had to run it. Um, capital outlay, outlays tend to fluctuate a lot. Um, you guys had some big projects going lately, so that line will be all over the place. Uh, the last graph is water and sewer fund. And there again, you had about a 4% increase in rates, but the overall revenue was up more just because of usage. Industrial was up quite a bit um, this year. I think that on the, <coughs> the water and sewer fund graph, I think the important thing for people to remember is the expenses don't include debt service. That's correct. So if it you would look at this, you got, yeah, you got $1.1 $1 million <laughs> worth of revenue. You got $2.6 million in expenses. You go, wow, we're making a lot of money. Why are we raising rates? Well, the answer is we're paying down debt. Correct. And that's really. Yes. And then any fixed assets you add uh, uh, outside of the big stuff that you issue right. debt for right. um, also isn't there. Are we going to be able to get these to the paper, the graphs? Adam wants them. I don't know if you used them last year or not, but. Certainly can. Data. I think we included them in our spring newsletter. Oh, okay. All right. That's rather fine. than the paper. Okay, that's fine. Other questions? Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Ellen. Compliment the staff for doing a good job again. And yes. Myself having gone through numerous audits, that's always great to hear. So congratulations to the team. As usual. And team and to As usual. Exactly. As usual. So that's great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alan. Next, we'll hear from City Administrator Terry Thorne. Okay. The only item I have for you this evening is a request for approval, which there's an ordinance later on this evening uh, for an agreement with. Crawford Murphy and Telly Engineers. Um, they will be working with us for the Highway 47 ramp beautification project that we have budgeted. Um, this year we have budgeted to get the design and engineering work completed and perhaps a small start on the project, but there's going to be approvals with MoDOT and all those typical things when you're working on a state related railway. So the engineers will subcontract with the designers who will be the same designers that designed all of the landscaping at the new interchange. Uh, we're hoping to do a smaller version um, similar to what's out there. Um, so this will get them started on that project. It does not include uh, the bidding process, which we'll handle in-house. It also does not include construction oversight. So we probably will see a small addition to this as that project actually moves forward. Uh, but first, we need to look at what we can possibly do there, look at the design, get some cost estimates, and see what the cost will really be to try to push this project forward. I can't imagine it be too. I mean, there's not that much space there. If you think about, the, if they're talking about just doing it in those wedges, and that's really all we have to work with in terms of ground. Right. So it's, I think we can do something that ends up with a similar look, but on a much smaller scale. I'd love to be able to see some flags out there, even though they might not be as large or to the extent that we have at the other place. But we'll see what's possible. A lot will depend on what we can get MoDOT approval for. Yeah. yeah. Lighting, we're going to need irrigation, <laughs> which is also some way we have to figure out if we're going to put plantings out there and keep them alive. We have to get irrigation there. So we'll be working on that part of it internally while they're working on this design part so we can bring you a full proposal once this is ready. And there is an ordinance for this later on. That's all I have. Thank you.
Next, we'll hear from the Director of Planning and Development, Neil Fick. Good evening, Board, Mayor. Um, you have a copy of my monthly planning and development report. Um, there was a change in there. We had the Cup of Joe Arcade. Um, they had applied for a conditional use, but they are no longer going to be at the Warrington Outlet Center. So they're looking for another location now. They would like to come to Warrington still, but they were just uh, informed that they're not going to be able to be at, at that location. I have for right now. Thank you, Neil. Next, we'll hear from Maintenance and Grounds Director Brad Boozy Cruz. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Board. Uh, we have my uh, monthly report. Um, maintenance is, is up as it is usually this time of year. Um, all our moors are majority of them are in now and we're starting to service those so uh, that number will probably keep going up so I'll spread oh I have thank you very much sir next we'll hear from the building commissioner Mike Cross Good evening, Mayor and Board. You have my monthly report. Last year, how many new residents we have? 59 last year. So we're at 67 with one month to go. And we just had three more turn-ins, so we're up to 70 right now. Mike? No, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Chief of Police, Larry Ellard. Good evening. The first item I have for you tonight is my monthly report. Questions on this one? <laughs> I also have three general orders on for your review and approval. The first would be property and evidence control. Uh, the second would be evidence collection and preservation. On those? I'll entertain a motion to approve the following uh, property and evidence control, court appearance and subpoenas, and evidence collection and preservation policies as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Knox. Signal by Alderman Dyer. Roll call. Alderman Shell Harvey. Yes. Alderman Dyer. Yes. Alderman Yes. Yes. Alderman Yes. 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 Motion passes 5 0 with one absent. Yeah. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 56 19. So moved. An ordinance to authorize the mayor to sign a professional services agreement between Crawford Murphy and Tilly Incorporated in the city of Morton for the design of enhancements to Interstate 70 and Route 47 interchange. Did a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 56-19. So moved. Second. Development Dyer, second by Alderman Locke. Ordinance to authorize the mayor to sign a professional services agreement between Crawford Murphy and Tilly Incorporated in the city of Morton for the design and enhancements to Interstate 70 and Route 47 interchange. Oh. Yes. Hawk? Yes. Eloy? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Al Harvey? Yes. Bill passes 5 0 with one absent. Uh, motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are so adjourned. Thanks, folks.